In 1903, a 16-year-old boy in India received a library copy of this book from his friend. He studied the contents of this book in extreme detail. He independently developed and investigated the Bernoulli numbers. He also approximated Euler's constant up to 15 decimal places. Note that Euler himself did this in 1735. Also note that it is an unsolved problem in mathematics to determine if Euler's constant is actually irrational. His name was Ramanujan, and this is the book he used to learn mathematics. In this video, we're going to briefly talk about this book. I'm going to show you some of the math that's actually in this book, which I think is really cool. A Synopsis of Elementary Results in Pure and Applied Mathematics, Volume 1, George S. Carr. And this is obviously a reprint. This book is free and in the public domain. I will try to leave links in the description to free versions and also print versions in case you're interested. Before we look inside the book, I just want to show you this because it's really cool. This book has been considered by academicians and scholars of great significance and value to literature. This forms a part of the knowledge base for future generations so that this book is never forgotten. We have represented this book in a print format as the same form as it was originally first published. Hence, any marks or annotations seen are left intentionally to preserve its true nature. So this is literally a piece of history. Let's take a really brief look at some of the table of contents, and then we'll jump into some more of the math that's actually in this book. So it starts off with mathematical tables, and you see that there's some very interesting tables here. And then the table of contents after that is very different. Notice it says number of article. So here are some more of the contents. And so whenever you see number of the article, it's basically referring to a concept. We'll take a look at the book soon so you can actually see how it's laid out. When I first got this book, I was thinking, oh no, this book has a lot of pages and my copy is not that thick. Is that I only get some of the book? Is the book missing? You know, what is going on here? And it just keeps going and going and going. So let's go ahead and jump into this and take a look at some of the actual mathematics that you'll find in this book. So here's something I didn't expect to find in the book. It actually talks about interest. So you have R be the interest for one year and the number of years, P the principal and A the amount in N years. And then they give you these formulas. And so these are formulas that you study in an algebra class in college today. So this book actually does have a lot of basic math and I was really shocked to find so much on interest and annuities in this textbook. It's pretty cool. Here they talk about quadratic equations and then it talks about the method of solution without the formula. Basically, it's just the process of completing the square, which is super important in mathematics. Here he discusses logarithms. He gives you all of the popular properties for logs. Again, these are learned in an algebra class today, which is pretty cool. Some of the stuff that's in this book is no longer really taught in standard classes in college today. For example, here he discusses cubic equations, and he talks first about something known as Cardan's method and explains how to solve a specific cubic equation. Here he continues with Cardan's method to solve the cubic equation, and then he actually gives another method called the trigonometrical method to solve the cubic equation. And in this case, it can only be solved when this expression here is negative. And he actually goes through and shows some of the steps and then finishes up here. Really cool to see this type of math in an old book like this. And so depending on whether this quantity is positive or negative, you would use Cardan's method or the trigonometrical method. This section is on biquadratic equations and there's a couple different ways to do this. You have Descartes' solution here. Then they discuss Ferrari's solution here. And I love the name Ferrari. Always makes me think of the car. And then Euler's solution. So this book really is just a book filled with techniques and theorems. This is the discussion on determinants. You can see here it talks about the determinant of a 2x2 two two matrix and a 3x3 three three matrix. Here the book goes into trigonometry. So it goes over all the important stuff that you need to know for trig, and you notice that there's not much in the way of examples. Oh, here's some identities. These might seem familiar. I mean, there's a few, but it's a very, very concise book. And so looking at this, I just get, I don't know, it's just a little bit weird to think that Ramanujan was able to do so much with this being, you know, the book he had. You know, he was able to create mathematics on his own 
just using this single book. People say that Ramanujan's friends were always in awe of his mathematical abilities, and he was rarely understood. I fairly recently saw the movie The Man Who Knew Infinity, and this is a movie about the life of Ramanujan, and I thought the movie was a little bit slow, but I also thought it was very interesting because it was about Ramanujan, so I pretty much hung on to every word, and every time I felt like I was missing something, I would pause it and rewind it. I was really interested in everything about his life. And in the movie, which I definitely recommend that everyone watch, it was noted that Ramanujan didn't really know how to write precise mathematical proofs, and it wasn't until he worked with Hardy that he was able to write proofs and learn how to express his ideas more precisely. This book also discusses spherical trigonometry, which is rarely taught today. In fact, I've never seen any college offer a course on spherical trigonometry. Planes through the center of a sphere intersect the surface in great circles. Other planes intersect it in small circles. Yeah, and so this is a subject that was taught in the past. I actually have entire books on spherical trigonometry. You can see here they talk about elementary geometry. I just have to give it a whiff, even though this book is new. Ah, oh, yeah, it's got a nice smell. So now that you see how the book is laid out, you might be wondering how did Ramanujan learn all of the mathematics that he was able to learn and come up with all of these mysterious formulas and identities that are still studied today? And the answer is nobody really knows. Uh, according to the movie, he was just some you know mystical genius who was self-taught, and this is the book that he used. And so that's why I had to find this book and buy it, because I wanted to see what it was like. And honestly, I am fairly impressed. It's actually better than I thought it would be. Obviously, there are far superior books to use today to learn mathematics that explain things a lot better than this book, because this book is basically just a collection of theorems and formulas and techniques that have been organized into this textbook. And there's no real exercises or anything. It's just all you know, numbers like this with either a formula, a technique, or a theorem. I think this is a really cool book because it's actually, again, available for free and it's worth looking at. You know, you just go through and you look through, you know, all of the formulas and all of the interesting math and it's all very organized, you know, 270, 271, 272. And not all of it will make sense, but it's still kind of fun to look at. It's a piece of history and it's free. I think it's really great that it's still free. I am going to try to find a link to a free copy. I don't know if it exists, but I'm sure it does, so I'll post it in the description. I'll also try to find a link to a print copy. Um, I bought this one very, very recently, and this one's published by um, Alpha Editions, but there's different um, companies or people that reprint um, these old books, and so you can get a different one reprinted by someone else. And yeah, this is volume one, so pretty cool. Ramanujan was a brilliant mathematician, and that movie, you know, The Man Who Knew Infinity, I totally recommend everyone check it out. It is so good, um, just super good. It's a little bit slow, and I was a little bit disappointed in how slow it was, and it was also um, a little bit sad, but I really liked it, and you know, it's a math movie, so if it's a math movie, I have to watch it. It took me a long time to watch it, and I'm really happy that I did. So, yeah, pretty cool book. And if you can find an original, <laughs> that's even better. Originally, uh, I was looking for like an original copy of this book because I collect math books, but yeah, no way, I could not find it. And even the reprints were really expensive. Um, this one wasn't too bad. I don't remember how much I paid for this, but I, I'm pretty sure this was less than $25 for this one. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy it. But yeah, I'll look for it and see what I can do. And I'll also leave a link to the free copy in case you wanna check it out. I think it's really cool. You know, it's, it's a piece of history, right? It says it back here. And I hope I said that word right. Yeah, a piece of history. Anyways, kind of a random video. Just wanted to show you this book. Good luck.